Hello. Good morning. Happy Tuesday to all. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And good morning. Wherever you're joining from, wherever you're connecting from, good morning. Welcome. Canada, welcome. Good morning. Connecticut, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I'm just thankful to God to be here, to be alive. You know, a lot of people that are younger than myself have died. And last night, and some people that are older than me, they are, they died too. So we need to thank God every day that we are here. We need to give thanks to God. It is, it is a blessing to be given another chance. So if there are anything in your life that you need to ask God for forgiveness for, now is the time to tell God, forgive me. I have done this, Lord. I have done that. And I ask you to forgive me. It's time to repent. Repentance is walking away from your old self. Walking away from sin. Repentance is rejuvenating the spirit. Amen. When you want to feel good in your body, you go get a massage. You go to the gym, you take a shower, but your spirit man needs to be clean. Many people are praying and asking God for anointing and asking God to give them certain gifts. But you also have to repent. You have to take care of your spirit. Amen. Good morning. Grenada, welcome. Boynton Beach, welcome. Good morning, Connecticut. May the Lord give your strength it's not easy you know many times we sin and we don't even know that we sin because nobody told us that the things that we are doing is a sin and the thing continues and it become a lifestyle it become a pattern and god want us to be clean god want us to make it right with him you understand me? Many of us, we are trying to make it right with man. And we are not making it right with God. And God is saying, I'm watching you because I am a jealous God. You expect me to keep you alive. You expect me to do all these things for you. But yet, your lifestyle does not glorify me. The things that you are doing, the work of your hands does not glorify me. You are working for it. Many people are working for their enemies. Many people are working for people that God write them off. God condemns some things. And many Christians are falling into the hands. Oh God. Many Christians have fallen into the hands of their enemies. And I'm saying enemy because by, the Bible tells us that if you are a friend to the world, you are an enemy to God. And many Christians have fallen into the hands of their enemies. Yes, there are times when God will allow you to fall into your enemy's lap. Why? Because of disobedience. When Israel end up into captivity, God purposely did that. So God allowed Daniel and the other Hebrew boys to be elevated in Babylon. I'm here to share something. Many times you find that you are working among some people and they turn you into slave. And yet you, 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 you don't even see this is what's happening. It's spiritual. It is spiritual. People that your parents would never work for. You find that you are working for these people. People that your family members and your parents would never look at. You find that you are eating out of the hands of these people. Be careful. Be careful. Good morning, Minister Jackie. Be careful. You have to be careful. You know, Jacob and Esau were twins. They were brothers. But there comes a time when man hungry. 
<laughs> Lord have mercy. There comes a time when man hungry and choose food over the birthright. There comes a time. You see, you have to be careful who you end up around when you're hungry as well. Hallelujah. You will lose everything that is precious. Many people lose. Minister Valdin, how are you? I've been thinking about you know that. You are sister Amy. <laughs> Listen to me, people of God. You have to be careful who you are around when you're hungry. Or who you allow yourself to be around when you need food. Because Jacob, brother at the time, only brother. They never had any other brother, Esau. Sold his birthright for food. Yes, Minister Angela, use wisdom. The only brother. The only brother. Isaac never have any more children. He only have two boys. Mm -hmm. And the only two children that they have. Remember the same thing happened with Cain and Abel. Adam and Eve only had two kids. In the beginning. Later on in life after Cain mess up. Kill off poor Abel. Then God bless Eve whom again I have set. So God start to get the glory. So I'm here to tell the people of God. It's the people that we trust. It's always the hypocrites that we trust that take advantage. So be careful who you are around when you need a drink of water. Jesus. When Jesus need water. When Jesus need water. They gave him vinegar. I'm telling somebody this year today, listen, listen, and listen good. When Jesus was thirsty and need water, he was offered vinegar. Be careful who you hang out with. So when the day of trouble come, my God, the Bible tell you in the book of Matthew, prayer. That your flight not come during winter. Because during winter people desperate. During winter people lonely. During winter there is not much traffic. Hallelujah. So be careful who in your presence during winter. Oh God have mercy. Be careful who you choose during winter. The Bible said pray that your flight is not during winter. Pray that you're not giving birth during winter. Pray that it's not, hey, God, I don't know who God is talking to, but pray. Pray that you don't call to give birth during winter. Because during winter, many doctors are on vacation. Stop playing your cards into the hands of your enemies. Be careful who you are running to. Thinking that these people are your friends. You're, you're, you're giving up your weapon. You're laying down your weapon at the feet of your enemy. Man, satire. You are laying down your weapons at the feet of your enemies. Be careful. Many of us as Christians, we're too fleshy. We're too fleshy and this is what we are looking for. Anybody that can give you a cup of water, you run, go drink. Hey! Jesus Christ. Many of you are just too gluttonous. The Bible tell you about your belly. Jesus said, don't make your belly be your God. If you if, listen to me, people of God, if you follow the scripture, you will never go wrong. Jesus said, don't allow your belly to be your God. Your B-E-L-L-Y, your God. So some people will offer you something because you're right there while the pot is stir. Many of us Christians will love too much freeness. God have mercy. We love too much freeness. 
Anyway, the freeness there. We up front. But I want to say this. Brother Andre Mead. How are you? Hallelujah. I want to say this. When Abraham's wife Sarah died. Abraham never take no free land. He paid for the land. They did not want him to pay for the land. Abraham said, listen to me. I'm paying for the land to bury my dead. Many of us believers, we believe in taking people things and don't realize that many of the things that we are taking, it is detrimental to us. Many of us believers, the problem that we are having, we are looking for people to always rub down our head, rub down our shoulder, pat us and tell us good. Stop it. Stop it. There are some places that many of you used to be. And all that is at that place is tough love and you never like it. You want to go someplace for people to acknowledge you. Yes, you want praises. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do what you have to do for the Lord and calm your nerves. You see, God is a jealous God. Many people are not building the kingdom of God. They are building their own kingdom. So be careful who you run to. Hallelujah. Be careful who you run to. Jesus have mercy. Be careful who you run to. Abraham never won no free land. He had the money to pay for the land to bury his dead. And some of your Christians, you want everything free. You want every. You don't want to pay for anything. And people that are like that, they didn't just become that. They've been that way all their life. So be careful you're playing your card into the hands of your enemies. And as the word of God said, don't allow your belly to be your God. Many of you need to go on fasting sometime. Fasting, yes. Put away the food. Abstain from the big plate of food and go fast and pray to God. Put the food aside and go cry out to God because many of you are eating up your own blessings. My Jesus. Many of you, you, you as, so you eat, you're eating your children's blessings. So, so you eat, you're eating your grandchildren's future. So you eat, you're eating away on your children's marriage. You're eating away, uh, yes, on their breakthrough. Uh, as a parent, you just eat, eat, eat. Come on. Leave some for your children and your grandchildren. Mighty God. Many of you, you, you have a problem with paying your tithes. But when your problem come, you tear down church door. You want the whole church to stand with you and support you. Hey! God have mercy. Listen to me. I listen good. Ever since God call me I didn't call myself because nothing that I'm doing here is of my flesh ever since God called me I tell people my name is not Pastor Feel Good so I'm not going to make try to make anybody feel good not even my children I cannot make them feel good my name is not Pastor Feel Good many of you are looking for people to baby you up and spoon feed you with the word of God did you know that if you receive one word from the Bible, it's better than a plate of, than a meal for the whole month, than groceries from, for the whole month. So look, my sisters and my brothers, stop looking for fish and bread and look for the word of God. Stop chasing after some people are going to a certain place because something is there for them to eat. Stop. Go spend your money. Many of you are friends with some people because you cannot get some food at your house. Stop it. You're eating away on your blessing. My God. You see, the more you work for the Lord, is the less people going to like you. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong. Allow them to sit down and gather up and talk about you. All you have to do, do what God called you to do. It's not about friendship. 
Many people cannot preach because if they preach, their friend going to hurt their feelings. I'm telling you, the reason why, yes, a lot of people are dying because they are eating too much. Hey, you go places because you don't have no food. Ah. Go and fast and tie your belly and cry out to God. The reason why some people are still single is because they eat too much. They don't know how to pray. They only pray when they find their time to go to church. And even when they're in the church, they dislike the pastor. They speak, how oh, are you going to be blessed if you are going to a church and you don't like the pastor? You don't have nothing good to say about your pastor. You don't, it don't make no sense you go there. It don't make no sense you pay tithes. Any ministry you go in and you cannot come in agreement. The Bible reminds us that when you live your life to please God, you'll be established. The Bible reminds us that when you follow your prophet, you'll be blessed. So be careful. The reason why many people are still jumping from church, from church to church, from service to service, because they are still bitter. They need healing. They need to be healed from that childhood trauma. So everywhere they go as an adult, they have problems with people. Check yourself. Check yourself. I have an anthem. My name is not Pastor Feel Good. Whatever God said, that's what I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. You don't have to like me, but love the word of God. I'd rather give you the word of God than give you a plate of food. You know why? Because that plate of food can last a generation. But once you eat, you have to go to the bathroom. Mighty God. My mother always says she has three children and the youngest one is a fool. Because I used to, I just give away everything I have. I give it away. I yes. Yes. So you see, God is looking for people to bless. But he cannot bless you if your hands are tight. Nothing will come to your hand if it's like this. Open your hands so God can put something in there. Open your hands so God can place something in your hand. Mighty God. Many people are still waiting for their blessings and they are almost they are almost at retirement age and still no blessing. Still no blessing and they are almost at retirement age. Many people are working for for, for uh, let me see if I can find the right word. Some people are telling till they're taking it from one church to the next. You come from this pastor, you become friend with this pastor, and you go friend with another pastor. Lord have mercy. Glory to God. You, so you jump from one church to the next. And you, all you want is friendship from pastor. What happened to the word of God? Pastor can't save you. Repent. It's time to repent. It's time to repent. It's time to turn your life over to God. You see, there was a young woman that says, I used to be in church and I thought I was saved. Until one day I went into fasting and prayer and I realized I was not saved. God tell the woman that she not saved because she's still living in a sin. People of God, it's time to come out of sin. It's time to come out of sin. Come out of it. The life that you used to live when you were in the world is the same thing you're doing in the, in the church. You chat people, you gossip, you try to rob them, you try to take their husband, you try, hey, Jesus Christ, Come on, it's time to repent. It's time to check yourself and repent. You cannot speak negative of your pastor and expect your pastor to bless you. Where is your heart? Pastor Rochelle, all the way from South Africa, welcome. My God. It's time to repent. It's time to change your ways. Jesus, make it clear. Pray that your flight is not during winter. It means that pray that when winter comes, that's not when your problem arise. Pray that it's not when winter comes, it's time for you to give birth. Because the umbilical cord will choke that baby to death. You will, oh, you will die during labor. You will die during labor. Pray to God. 
It's time to ask God for forgiveness of your sins, the known and the unknown. Many people have been doing some things for all their life and nobody wouldn't tell them that it's a sin because their tithes is big in the church. Come on! Repent! Your pastor cannot correct you because you have an attitude. Go repent! Go and repent. If no one cannot speak to you about your bad habit, go on your knees and ask God for forgiveness. My name is not Pastor Feel Good. Mind, I was not anointed to make anybody feel good. El Shaddai Prayer International is not run by likes. Because if it was for likes, we would not be active. So please go and make it right with God. The reason why some women are still single is because they refuse to submit to their husband. They want to control, they want to play a man. Oh Jesus. Yes. You, some women make man look like women because you want man to lay down. Oh, Jesus. So you can be the boss. Listen to me. Take care of yourself. And take care of your soul. Take care of yourself. And take care of your soul. God is not an author of confusion. Now look. They don't even want women to preach no more. Because some of them are so emotional. They don't bring no laundry to church. My God. You don't do everything in the church. And when I say laundry, I'm not talking about physical laundry. You understand me? Some men are the same too. But I'm just saying, take care of your soul. It's time to repent. Many of you are running on overdrive. You are overload. You need to drop your burdens. Give God what is due unto him. Many of you are playing God. Stop it. Stop it. Mighty God. Many of you take over the pants from the man. And you're doing things that man does. How is God going to visit you? When you are, when you are belligerent. How is God going to prosper you? When you dislike your leader. When you dislike the shepherd that he called to shepherd over your life, over your soul. How is God going to bless you when you speak ill of your church members? How is God, oh God Almighty, it's time to repent. It is time to repent. The word of God still stands. It doesn't matter who you are. The word of God still stands. It don't change. If your friends really love you, they will tell you that the things that you are doing is wrong. If your friends really love you, they will allow you to see where you are going wrong and not support you in your wrongdoings. Mighty God. Let me tell you, sometimes some people come, God send them and they get greedy and you have to cut them off. Yes. Many times God send people around you and instead of they come and behave themselves so they can get their deliverance and their breakthrough, they come and they become greedy. They, be, they become, yes, they become Jezebel and Judas. I'm telling you, people of God, it's time to repent. You know, as I were in the book of Kings, I was studying the book of Kings and I'm here to let you know. You see, God always protects his own. God, you know, Obadiah said because Jezebel was killing off the prophets of God, meaning that the ones that God called to speak over his people, Jezebel was killing them off. So Obadiah hid some of them in caves, 50 in each cave. I'm going to tell somebody sometime, calm your nerves. Stop going from one place to the next. Calm down so God can bless you. Look at your life where you were 10 years ago. 
and look at the problems that you used to have. You're having the same problem even though you're in a different church. Ten years ago, you were in a different church. But the problem that you're having today is the same kind of problem you had ten years ago. Do you think it's the members in the church who the problem? is you. The Bible said Obadiah had to hide the prophets of God while Jezebel was killing them off. So the, pro- the false prophet could function. And God said Elijah on the spot. People of God, I'm here to let you know, God always protect his own. God always protect his people. God always protect his people. He said he was looking every day, bring them food and water daily. So God always find a way to hide his people. The reason why many of you cannot see me is because God hide me. Many of you are looking for me on social media. No, God hide me. God hide me. Many of you will never find me. Even if you come to my house, you won't find me because I won't be there. Busy doing what God want me to do. Be careful of how you treat God's people. Be careful. Be careful of your actions. Be careful. You see, Paul speaks of this attitude in the book of Corinthians. He said, I did not come to shame you, but to warn you. Many of us, we cannot take warning. We say people are trying to shame you. Nobody's trying to shame you. It's just to put you on your guard. Be on the watch. Be on your double watch. I'm telling you, people of God, be on your double watch. This is not to shame you, it's to warn you. Many of you are so thin-skinned. The word of God comes and it brought conviction and you get angry because you're in your feelings. Let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus didn't care about your feelings. He said, remember who you are. Why? He put it in, he put the word in David to remind us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That means some people you look at them and they're gonna look fearful. Hello. <laughs> you are fearful and wonderfully made. Some people are going to put fear because that's how God made them. They were created that way. Hello, somebody. So we need to understand that God is not playing any games with us in this season. God is tired of your games. Your sin, your wake up. You didn't repent. You find yourself in church. You find fault with everybody. You dislike your pastor. You dislike the member. You dislike the people that sing. You don't like how they dress. Hello? Check yourself. Self check. Check, check. It's time to check yourself. You have a problem with everybody, but the life that you're living, it's not there to glorify God. Do you know what your true calling is? Do you know what your true calling is? Because some people, they come to church and they plagiarize other people's sermon. They come to church and all they talk about is what they see on TV or what they see on YouTube. Where is the word that the Lord placed in your heart? Did you receive it? Did you receive the prophecy that God sent you? Did you repent from your wicked ways? This is not a joke. Some people are too problematic. You have to cut them off. Some relationships are too toxic. You have to cut people off. You really want to know? When Saul, King Saul was having all this attitude and was in his feelings, killing the wrong people, Slaughtering people. God told him to slaughter a certain group of people and he didn't slaughter them. He saved them. So you see, he was a king, but he was not listening to the word of God. He saved the wrong people. And he stopped hearing from God. Many of us are going around trying to save people, people that God reject. 
So he saved the wrong, the wrong king. Lock him up in his house. And God said, Saul, what are you doing? He said, these goats are clean, they are good. And the bread over there is good. God said, no, but I told you to get rid of them. He said, no. So he didn't hear from God anymore. The prophet never communicated with him anymore. The prophet cut him off as a king. He never heard another word from the prophet until the prophet died. And he still was not hearing from God anymore. So he went to a place with a woman that have a familiar spirit to raise up the dead man's spirit. And even when the man died, he said, Saul, why did you do this thing? You see, this is what caused some people to sin. Because they don't want to behave themselves. They don't want to listen. They don't obey the voice of God. People of God, listen to me. If you cannot obey God's voice, who will you obey? And because the king went and raised up the dead man of God's spirit, God killed him and his sons that see him dear. So be careful. This sin will cause you to go and search for witchcraft. This sin, this thing called sin, it's true. It is the Bible. This thing called sin will cause you to go and look for people to prophesy to you. Did you know that when you go around and look for prophecy, it's witchcraft. It is another form of witchcraft. Looking for people to tell you the future. It is witchcraft. Paying people to prophesy. She made a lot of mercy upon people. It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. Even if you call somebody and ask them, did God show you anything? It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. Because you're seeking. You're seeking. My God. And if you remember clearly, before Saul became king, he lost his father's donkeys. He couldn't find them and he heard about Samuel. And when he met Samuel, Samuel said, chill with me, stay with me for a little while. By the time you leave my presence, the donkeys will be found. And they were found. So I'm here to let you know, my people, just relax yourself. When it's time to repent, ask God for forgiveness. You cannot grow in the spirit if you're living in sin. Because God is a spirit. I have to repent every day because things happen in my life and I have to go to God and ask Him to forgive me. Yeah. Sometimes it's not even for the known, it's the unknown. Many times people do things and they didn't realize that the thing that they did is a sin. So you have to ask God for forgiveness for the known and the unknown, your behavior. Many of you, the things that you do, you learn it when you were kids and it's wrong. And you're still practicing these things today. You're mixing up stuff to be and then talking about you're taking bath. May the Lord have mercy upon you. May the Lord have mercy upon you. I'm telling you. God is jealous. And this is the reason why so many people are still struggling. Don't know if they are going or if they are coming. Don't know the left foot from the right foot. Yes. And yet they are a part of the church. Many of them are active in church, but they are still living in the wrong. No one is stepping up to tell them the truth, that the life that they are living, it's not of God. People need to know the truth. Don't be ashamed to tell your members the truth. Not to insult you, but to call it out and say, listen man, this direction that you're taking is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. The way you're handling the situation is wrong. When people love you, they talk to you and tell them the truth. If you love your children, you tell them the truth. The Bible reminds us that when God loves you, whoever God loves, he chased them down. So don't rebuke the chastening. You understand me? Allow God to beat you. Repent. No one is too old to repent. It doesn't matter who you are, you have to ask God for forgiveness. You could be the chief of chiefs, you have to go to God and ask for forgiveness. Everybody sin. 
The word of God reminds us in the book of John that if you say you don't sin, the truth is not in you and you're calling God a liar. And God don't lie because God is a spirit. He's not man. According to the book of Numbers, it reminds us. God cannot lie. And when God bless you, he's not going to take it back. The blessing cannot be reversed. It, there might not be any additional blessing. But when God, this is why some people, when they speak in tongues, all their life, they only say two words. They never go past those two words. Why? Because spiritually, they are not growing. There are no limits when you receive diverse tongues. There are no limits because it's diverse. So it's time to check yourself. It is time to check yourself. Many of us think ministry is friendship and so we're trying to do the friend thing. It don't work. When Samuel again was stepping down from his post, not one of his children were qualified. So you see, it's not a family thing. It's not a friendship thing. It's God's business. The man was a true prophet of God. But when he was stepping down from his post, none of his children were qualified. They were not eligible for the position. So be careful of this thing that you're calling friendship and looking for people to become friends with you because you're part of a church. Listen to me, not everybody that's in the church is living right. Fix your life with God. And walk in your true calling. The reason why some things are passing you by. Is because you're not doing the right thing. Hallelujah. So I'm here to let you know people have got to share this message. Share this message. With someone that you love. Share this message with someone that you care for. Share this message with at least 10 people. They need to hear the truth. I'm not going to tell you anything to make you feel good because that's not my nature. The word of God is either going to bring conviction or healing. Stop going around looking for church that the pastor make you feel good. That's a joke. That is a joke. Mighty God. Many of you pastor ever call out your, sh- your shame or your sin in a church. You disgrace pastor. Try me. Try me. Try me. Come to church with your crap and think you're going to get away with it. Try me. We are in a perilous time and people are dying because of sin. Tell people the truth. Love me or leave me. Tell people the truth. The church is not here to disgrace you. It's here to strengthen you, to build you. Come out of sin. Enough is enough. The reason why Samuel children were not qualified because he was brought up with Eli and none of Eli's children were qualified either. So people live what they learn. Samuel was left in the tabernacle since he was a baby. Anna leave him there with the, the priest Eli. Eli raised him up. But Eli's sons were prostituting in the church. Hello, somebody. And it caused him to lose his life because he refused to rebuke his children. So you see, it's not a family thing. It's not a friendship thing. Many people get personal and do their own thing. That's okay. And they all you talk too much. No, you don't talk too much. You need to rebuke sin. The man was so good at what he did for the Lord, but yet none of his children were qualified. God is not playing any any games with anybody. It's time for you to repent. It's time for you to change your ways. This is not a friendship thing. This is not a, 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 what you call a brotherhood or a sisterhood. No, it is the work of God. Some people don't want nobody. You need to go and repent. Some people don't want nobody to remind them that they didn't repent. You need to repent. God will never fill you up unless you empty your vessel. God will never pour new wine in old dirty bottle. That's You see, the way the Bible describes our sins, it's a mess. 
The way the Bible speak of our, 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 our past life. Oh Jesus. It's time to repent. There is no sin that will go unpunished. Repent, ask God for forgiveness and move on. It, it's, salvation is personal. This is not between you and any man. This is between you and God. But you can't walk up in some people's church and act funny. Not every pastor is blind. Some people don't want to be in any church where the pastor cannot see anything. While some people, they want pastor to shut up. Because they want to control. Listen to me, people of God. Know your place. It's time to know your place. You cannot be living in sin and want to minister to people. It's time to know your place. Because if you know your pastor is living in sin, you're not going to allow this pastor to minister to you. You're going you're gonna to go hunting for a different church. So know your place. Understand who you are. And it's time to take the things of God serious. Amen. That man, that man anoint David to be king. He anointed Saul to be king. He went around and he did the work of the Lord in truth. But yet when he was stepping down in old age, none of his boys were qualified to do the work of God. Why? Because they were scammers. They were thieves. None of them were qualified. But that was not Samuel's concern. No. He didn't concern himself with what his children were going to do. You see, you are responsible for your own soul. Somebody said, oh, my mother is a pastor. That don't stop you from going to hell. Oh, my husband is a pastor. That don't stop you from going to hell. Be careful. Be careful. It's time to repent. And any church that don't tell you to repent, run. Run. Any place you go and they don't tell you to repent, it's time to pack up our ask God to lead you. Run. The other day we pray and ask God to expose the whole church, to expose the me, the pastor, the members, the leaders, the associate pastor, everybody, we ask God to expose the church and God is doing it. We need to be transparent before God. We need to be clean. We need to walk right. We need to stop living a life of hypocrisy. God is jealous. We need to be honest with people. We need to tell people, we need to be able to tell people, thus saith the Lord, that if you, are, if you are empty, you cannot prophesy. You need to be filled up with the truth, the word of truth. So I encourage you to do what is right in the sight of God. Hello, somebody. I just want to share this word with you today. Remember, you have to repent. You don't stay on the same level. You started 10 years ago and you're on the same level. No, it's time to grow. And this is how you grow. You need to be pruned. Drop, get rid of the old dead leaves and dead limbs that no longer carry any fruit. Chop them off. It's time to, to pick up yourself, pull up your socks and move on. You cannot be on the same level for the last 10 years. No. Growth and development in the kingdom of God. When, 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 when the 12 disciples started, I'm not talking about the 72, I'm talking about when Jesus narrowed it down to 12. They were disciples and they end up being apostles and then they moved to priests. I'm here to tell the people of God it's time to grow. It's time for you to grow and stop being on the same level. If you're on the same level since people know you until now, something is wrong. You're doing something wrong. You, you need to learn the word of God so you can grow. Be filled up. Empty yourself of what is not good. Spread the gospel. Repent daily. My God. Jesus. Repent. You know, the most I speak is when I'm 
bring in the word of God. When I'm home, I'm quiet, listening to what God have to say to me. And while I was reading the book of Kings, I went back over chapter 18 yesterday and 19 today. And I realized in everything God does, he protects his people. He find a way. When Elijah wanted to die and Jezebel threatened him and he wanted to kill himself, God said, you got to go back and anoint some people to do my work. So you see, you might be in, you might be having problems in the church and you feel like leaving the church, but God has some people for you to bless. That's what he told Elijah. Elijah was ready to throw in the towel because Jezebel threatened him. I'm here to let you know, no Jezebel from the pit of hell will never threaten you and get away as long as you're a child of God and you're living right. No demon from the pit of hell can destroy your ministry. No demon from the pit of hell will never destroy. No matter what they do, what they try, it will never work. What did God say to Peter? Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when Jezebel threatened, said and threatened Elijah, what did God say? Come on Elijah, pull up your socks. I have some people for you to anoint and raise them up into leaders. So people have got go repent. Go and repent and get it right with God. Amen. This is the word of God. And this has been Breakfast with Jesus. My time is up. Be a blessing. Stay blessed. Remember, the Lord loves you. It's summertime. Take care of yourself. Take care of your health. People of God. Sister Ivan, welcome. Ivan Blake. Listen to me, people of God. Don't be afraid of nothing. God will defend you. He is our defender. No. I, 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 yes. The word of God said, fear nothing. The heart of a king lies in the hand of God. Don't worry about what people will try to do to you. Just leave everything to God. Leave it at Jesus' feet. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. My time is up. I have to go. God bless you all.